Okay. Well, next up, uh, we're going to have one of those situations where I said something and then other people said I was wrong and they were right. And, uh, uh, you know, I love that. Uh, what was I wrong yeah. about, Blunty? All right. Well, today we're going to talk about the Fly Sky Gimbals. Uh, we, I believe you put out a video about the NV18. Is that right? Yes. Is that the new radio? The EL18 um, now. EL18. That's right. Um, and uh, in that video, you mentioned that there was a hundred hertz limit on the gimbal sampling. So we wanted to kind of lay out like what is actually happening with the gimbal sampling, and then also uh, why that was wrong, and also why it might not matter, and all those kind of things. So we kind of yeah. want to lay everything out for you here. So there's Risto, a lot of text here. Can we boil this down? Yeah. 100%. So Risto okay. from the Edge TX Discord gave us this this uh, batch of info. Uh, but to boil it down, essentially, um, they're not a 100 hertz limit. Um, they are basically limited by a chip inside of them that, that ends up polling. The sensors end up polling at less than 500 hertz. So you don't get 500 hertz if you set it to 500 hertz. Also, no matter what you set it to, it does not sync to the packet rate. So mm -hmm. what happens is you start to get uh, basically off step, right? Um, so you start to miss, like, miss beats. So this will be 10 milliseconds ahead, and this will be 20 milliseconds so, ahead. Hold, so hold bit, on. Yeah. Pause for a second. So what you're saying is mm -hmm. that with normal Edge TX on, like, a Radio Master radio, for example, or a jumper radio, the polling rate of the gimbals is synced with the polling with the packet rate. So if I'm running Express yeah. LRS at 150 hertz, there are 150 packets coming out of the receiver per second and we're reading the gimbal once for every one of those packets so they're they're essentially you get one piece of fresh data for every piece that you want to send out everything yeah, is you're sampling up. yeah you're sampling on time you're getting the most relevant recent data and you're getting that to the relevant recent packet and getting it right out the radio okay but the fly sky yeah. gimbals are polling at are they 100 hertz out of the box i don't believe so no uh, it seems like no matter what, they're 530 to 550 hertz somewhere in there. Oh, so I was just straight wrong. Um, but the problem is, like, because of that, it's like totally kind of it ends up being weird where they land. So if you check out the rest of that post, uh, uh, the imager has a couple of different things in the album, mm -hmm. um, and Risto goes through and explains kind of how this ends up looking. So this is what happens each, you know, basically where you set it each time, and then the timing of each, uh, like packet essentially so the hc uh cz is like the interval between the the packets of the sticks okay. so that's when the sticks are sampled and the this dots the, are when the this packets is the fly sky polling interval correct and you can see I how see. none of the dots actually end up lining up forever right okay so even the 500 hertz it's because it's 520 ish 540 ish it starts to get off kilter basically it and gets then behind, as... it gets in front of or behind Black Jungle points out in the Discord, this is potentially going to result... Well, I don't know about aliasing, but I guess technically it's aliasing. It's going to end up with a situation where sometimes you might get a duplicated packet, or you might have a late packet. Yeah, or you're, or you're sampling at a different spot on the gimbal than you might, or you know mm -hmm. some stuff like that. So if you scroll down, he also has much many other ways to look at it. So if anybody likes the data, mm -hmm. you know you can start to see like um, how the out of the latency is out of sync. And then I like the next one. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, it starts to show you how out of sync each set gets, basically, like when they land. Okay, so uh, practically speaking. Uh, yes. So what does this mean for say, users of the gimbals? So, so real quick, can we open back up that first post by Risto? Sure. Let's read that Absolutely. one more time. Um, so at the bottom of Risto's post here, he says, overall, the sampling rate and asynchronicity issue with FlySky digital hall gimbals is, in my opinion, overproportionately made into a problem. A big majority of RC pilots will not notice any difference. I'm a big fan of these digital gimbals, um, especially in these radios, that sort of thing, because the metal is great for gimbal components. It's top notch. Um, basically, he points out that with an updated gimbal firmware, if they just update the gimbal firmware uh, uh, for the chips that are on the gimbals, and then they work with Edge TX and get an API call, they'll be just even better because then they'll also be in sync. That's kind of what he points out. So gotcha. most people will never notice it. It's probably never a problem. It causes a little bit of jitter on the beta flight side, um, and then you you know there's there's you know, who knows, maybe there should be a preset for it that looks for the offset or something. But basically, you know, you'll probably never notice it. It'll probably never cause a control difference. Um, and it, yeah, it probably won't be a problem at all. But it is technically different and a problem uh, from the technical side of things. So it'd be cool if they did an update for the gimbals. Okay, so uh, 
so what I said in the video was uh, that the gimbals only pull at 100 hertz. And that means that if you're running Express LRS, et cetera, at higher rates, then you're not going to get the latency advantages, basically, because if you can't if you can't pull the gimbal fast enough to get new data, then the low, lower latency doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. And that is not true because the gimbals are actually running at around 500 hertz. Well, actually, yeah, what you end up getting, I think, is variable latency because like it's a progressively longer latency and then jumps back and then progressively longer latency and jumps back because you're pulling in a different spot when it hits the, mm -hmm. the thing. That, that would be my thought process, but I'd have to think about that more because if it's doing it every 530, right, right, then you're actually getting newer data. So it's not as long as it exactly. looks. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of, exactly. yeah. yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, I appreciate that. Risto, thank you for setting that, yeah. setting that straight. T Glad we could make this TLD correction. TLDR, not a big deal. We just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this might turn out to be more relevant than it seems because uh, it is possible for the hardware in the EL18 radio to run Express LRS. In fact, I've heard some people say they have private test code that is doing it. And I know that FlySky likes their own internal protocols and likes, you know, to sort of keep it in-house. But, I mean, oh, we're having some dropped frames. Well, what happened? You totally dropped out for me. So I think you yeah. just lost the internet for a We're second. Back. Like half We're back. Yeah. Hold on one second, guys. That normally doesn't no, no. happen. Normally I can still see you when you drop. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, damn, son. It's doing it again. It's going in and out. One second, guys. Hold tight. Let's get through the hiccup. I don't know what just happened. My internet just hiccuped. So Nothing tight. started, right? It, it's back. No, the stream is still live. We're still live. Don't say that thing you were about to say. Okay. <laughs> it looks stable at the moment. Uh, let's keep going. All right. All right. Um, so it would be super exciting to see Express LRS uh, in the a EL18 uh, with the built-in. I think that'd be. I'd love that make the radio a lot yeah. more appealing to me. Absolutely. I do like that form factor. I've tried it, and I think that form factor is pretty cool. It's cool. I'm not sure I want it, but it is cool. I've often said, like, I wish I could design my own radio because my hands don't fit on a normal. Like, even the big radios, they just don't go where they... Like, none of the fit makes sense. It should be more, like, hand-based instead of a big box. You know what I mean? And I mean, that's seems what, like they, they go that's what that, that radio right? did. A hundred percent. Try yeah. to design a radio around the human hand instead of the other, instead of a box and then do your best. Yeah. It feels like there could be a perfect way to hold your hands and then it'd just be comfortable and it'd feel normal. Yeah. You know, that, that's sort of what that goes for. So. Yeah. All righty. Well, uh, I look forward to the day. I think the day's coming when we will announce on the news that Express LRS can run on the internal module on the EL18. And I'll be excited yes. to announce that because I think, I think, that radio got a lot more love in the comments than I anticipated. Not that I didn't think it was like I had anything against it, but I, there were so many people who said they still are flying their original NV14. They just love the freaking radio. So, uh, big, uh, uh, big, big passionate following there.